Lesson, we're going to be studying the leg drag. We're going to be looking at this as a position and we're going to be stabilizing and finishing the guard pass in several different ways. We're going to talk first about entering into the leg drag, stabilizing the leg drag position itself, and then creating top pins with either the side control or the mount. And finally, we'll finish with taking the back. Let's check it out. Alrighty guys, so the leg drag is one of our most fundamental guard passes. We like to use this guard pass, especially for beginners, because it helps us understand the main concept of passing, which is gonna to be to access levers on our opponent's body to turn their guard away from us, so that way we can box their hips in. So first, let's talk about entering into the leg drag position. We're gonna start off with our opponent here in a seated guard. Anytime my opponent's seated in front of me, I'm gonna to look to try to put them on their back. So immediately, we're gonna to look to push the shoulders and control the opponent's shins. From here, we're getting into our bear crawl position. So I'm gonna be on all fours, kind of like a bear crawl. Now, from here, we're gonna be able to attack our leg drag. It's critical, though, that I'm making sure that I'm not letting my legs get too close to my opponent, and I'm doing a good job at controlling his shin so he can't reach out and connect to me. So if we see that again from a side view. So again, I'm gonna to look to pop my partner's shoulders, and immediately I crowd his legs and get into my good bear crawl so I'm not too close, and I'm controlling his shins very well. Once we've created our bear crawl position, I'm gonna to look to start attacking the leg drag. For our leg drag, we're gonna create a pant grip right down at the bottom of the leg. This is gonna give us the most leverage over their leg. From here, I'm gonna to look to punch this leg across like I'm trying to slam a door closed, but I'm not trying to put this floor, foot on the floor, and I'm also not gonna let go of it because then his guard will pop right back up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a strong grip. I'm gonna punch, and as soon as I punch, I'm gonna drop the close, closest shoulder to him, which is gonna be my right shoulder, in between his knees and elbows. So I'm gonna drop that shoulder as I reach my other hand down to connect to his bottom hip. Now we've entered into the leg drag position. It's called this because his legs are dragged across my body. We need to be able to stabilize this position first. So keeping my head low and my body in between his knees and elbows, my partner can try to push me away. I'm gonna make sure that I can control the position here. Let's see that again from a different angle. So first, I'm gonna put my partner on their back and immediately control the legs. I can create one pant grip or both. You can even try to fake them out. You can go one way and then leg drag to the other side as well. But again, I'm gonna slam that door. I drop the shoulder and I connect to his bottom hip. Make sure that I keep my head and hand on the far hip, so the hip furthest away from me. That way I can prevent him from hip escaping and I'm creating a box around his hips, kind of like a claw on a claw machine. So I'm gonna be nice and low, controlling the hips, and notice how Coach Seth is maintaining his back on the mat. That way he doesn't expose his back and he's using his hands to block my shoulder. This is a good reaction for the bottom person to get into framing their guard. Next, let's talk about creating top pins. First, we're gonna look at getting to our side control position. It's gonna look like this. So your side control is one of the very first top pins that you should be looking for when you're passing the guard. So when we attack our leg drag, we're gonna end up in that same leg drag position. So his leg is across my body and I'm controlling the bottom hip. From here, I expect my opponent to be trying to frame and push me away. This is a very common reaction. So I'm not just gonna let go and try to reach up for his head now because he can block my arm and reestablish his guard. So what we're gonna do is from this position, my right arm is gonna go in between his arms. So my right hand goes in between his hands, and this is gonna allow me to connect to his head. Now I'm blading my body so I can get my shoulder to his chin and immediately start creating a cross face. With this cross face, I can now exchange the leg drag position for our top pin here. I don't wanna let go of this leg drag until I have some type of lever control on the top half here. So again, I have a strong cross face. I'm gonna punch my underhook nice and high and connect my hands together. I can now start to walk my legs up north to get underneath this near arm. This is gonna allow me to keep his arms separated from his body and really pin him down well. Let's see this again from a different angle. I'll do it from the rear. Again, we put them on their back, control their legs. Right away, I slam that door and I come into my leg drag. My hand goes in between, 
I punch the arm up, and I start to move my legs up nice and high. I want to make sure that I keep my chest pinning really heavy on top of my opponent's body. Once we've gotten to this side control position, we would be awarded with three points. But from here, let's attack the mount as well. The mount is going to be worth four points. And our goal when we're attacking the mount is to slide our knee across our opponent's body. So again, I have a strong side control position. We're going to use our sneaky knee. So my knee is going to go from one side to the other. It looks like this. Now that I'm up high on my opponent, I can start pinning their arms, separating their structure. And this is going to establish attacks. So again, I've attacked my leg drag. And we get into our good side control position. My hand pummels, I get in between, and I start to connect to the upper body. From here as I walk, I get into a strong side control. I'm now gonna take the leg that's closest to his legs, my left leg in this case, and I'm gonna slide it from one hip bone to the other. I don't wanna throw my leg over because he's gonna be able to catch that in a strong half guard. So my left knee pops up first, and now I slide until my foot catches that hip. Now from here, I'm gonna move my chest from being perpendicular to being parallel with his body. Once I've established this position, I'm gonna to start to walk his arms above his head as I flip my foot over to the other side. Now from here, we're gonna to look to get up as high as we can into the armpits. And we like to establish wrist pins because this is gonna help us set up attacks. We can look for our Americana, or as we're attacking the Americana and they reach to defend, we can look for the arm bar. Let's look at our final reaction, which is gonna be when our opponent turns away from us this is going to expose the back for our chair sit. It looks like this. While most of our opponents are probably going to know that they shouldn't expose the back, it's likely that they may try to do that, especially if they have a good guard. They might be trying to turn away to perform a half gramby. So what we're going to do is we're going to time this. When they start to expose the back, we're going to use our knee as a wedge to prevent them from going backwards. And then we can establish our seat belt and take the back. So again, we get into our leg drag position. Remember, we use the leg drag as a position to finish the pass. Here, once I've established my leg drag, I notice my opponent's turning away from me. Whether they're trying to do a half Gramby or they're just making a mistake and turning away, I have to control the bottom hip. If I allow him to lift his hips up, now he has a strong frame and he's gonna reset his guard. So I need to make sure my left hand is controlling his bottom hip and I'm keeping his hips on the floor. From this position, I'm gonna look to connect my chest to his back as I punch my hand underneath his head. And now from here, I can slide my knee all the way up against this top shoulder. If I feel like my partner might try to roll backwards, we can also use our front hand to create a claw ride position where I'm connecting to the back of his neck and pulling him in towards me. Now again, my knee goes behind his back as I punch my hand under the head and I get into my chair sit position. Once I'm here, my hook goes over I can start to lift my partner and roll them over to the other side. Let's see this again from a different angle. So we enter into the leg drag. My partner turns. I come up and control the head as I slide my knee into the back. Once I slide that knee up, make sure we're maintaining that chest to spine connection. That foot can go over and we're ready to roll and establish our top hook. The leg drag is one of the most fundamental guard passes. It's also a guard pass that's going to be used at all levels in competition. So we really encourage you to study the, the leg drag, understand it from a positional standpoint, and then learn how to attack all the different finishes from there.